the recording. I still need to get around to uploading those. Maybe I uh, missed um, after my show. You can uh, help me um, figure out how to upload these. I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know the steps to follow or how to uh, label it. Oh. Here we are. Let me let me check up on the um, the chat here before I get started. Jabba balls. Uh, yeah, never. Um, no bunnies for you. Uh, now I'll go buy your nail polish. Uh, you hope, really hope Jawa's going to be great tonight. <laughs> well, there, there's some, so one of the commenters is saying how he really hopes Jawa is going to be great tonight. That's kind of a hard expectation to live up to, I think. Um, uh, no, I just, I just got here, mini girl. Hi, mini girl. Um, I, uh, I got started a couple minutes late because I was, uh, reinstalling the program and then I had to go, um, downstairs for a few minutes. So, um, I'm back. Uh, what did I want to talk about tonight? I have a lot, a lot going on. Um, I, you know, didn't really have time to, to get Matt over here to do X-Wing because I uh, just ended up being too busy. Um. But I did want to kind of talk about my Tau, uh, because I've been working on uh, painting some broadsides. Not the best camera, but um, here's here's the broadside sergeant. Let's see if I can steady this and put it up there for you. Uh, my broadside sergeant, as denoted by the white head. Um, I have to finish the basing, but... Uh, this guy, this this model, I mean, the, the, the thing with Tau is they're so huge. I mean, not huge, but so detailed. There's so many levels of detail on these things that uh, they, they take an excruciating long time to paint. And uh, if you miss any of those details, um, it, it's, it kind of, it, it shows. So on this particular model, um, I sprayed it first with Army Painter Desert Yellow, uh, which is, which I like. And then I painted the leg parts and the you know the under parts with uh, uh, Rhinox hide. Then I went over all of the armor plates with with um, Tau light ochre, GW, all GW paints, Tau light ochre. And then <laughs> I went over all the corners. When I mixed uh, Zamizi Desert with some uh, bone color, Ushabti bone, fifty fifty, and I did like a light a light a highlight around the edge of, of all the armor plates but a thick one a thick highlight and then I did a pure Ushabti bone on the edges did I go pure I think it went pure and then I did a, a screaming skull highlight on all the edges so um, a whole lot a whole lot of uh, painting is involved with this and there's so many details that uh, you can imagine uh, what goes on with that? With the with the brown parts, I highlighted those using uh, well Rhinox hide for the base color. Then I used a uh, Morn Fang brown for the uh, the brown highlights for the missiles. Even just the little missiles alone, um, I painted them. Uh, I tr I was trying different colors. I tried white first, uh, gray, then white, and then I didn't like that, um, so I went with red and uh, ended up trying different ways. I ended up with using corn red, then giving it a, a wash uh, with ball red um, wash. And then I touched it with, uh, I tried different reds. I tried uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, it was which was too red. And then I went with Blood Red, which was pretty nice. That's where I kind of finished up with now. Um, touched it with Blood Red, and then I uh, washed them again with the ball red. And that's uh, what I have. Uh, no, I did not magnetize this. Um, I don't see any need to play the broadside rail rifle because they're only like strength six, and uh, I haven't found a purpose for that yet. Um, I don't know what that would be good at shooting. Maybe monstrous creatures, but uh, I've got plenty of, of 
of firepower for monstrous creatures uh, in my Tau army. So I can't imagine a single rail rifle shot would be better than the the four shot strength seven off the missile the missile launcher. I am going to try. I, I have three more coming for my army because I'm going to play six broadsides. I am going to try uh, doing a, a like a double barreled missile launcher. I want to use the rail rifle. I want to use the rail. The rail rifle, yeah, they, yeah. I like I like how they look, um, especially the red I chose with the brown. Um, every, you know, I have to always put some red in there. Um, but you know, so I think I'm gonna try and like maybe add the you know combine the two missile launchers into like one big double barrel missile launcher and try to add so, figure out some way to combine that with the uh, the rifle that he's holding and hold it like a big maybe like an underslung missile launcher or something. I don't know. Um, uh, but I have three more broadsides coming. I want them to look a bit different from the first three I have, which are these guys. Oh, you know what? This is interesting. I can show you this too. I wish, you know, I still don't have my camera set up. Uh, I, I did borrow one, and uh, I'm trying to get it set up, but I just uh, I got home late and uh, ran out of time before I got the setup going on. So I just couldn't get it fun functioning tonight uh, to show you better video. But uh, these guys are kind of in the various stages of painting. This one, I just finished the brown base coat and the uh, the light Tau ochre uh, coat over the desert yellow. You can see some of the areas where I need to do touch up, like the brown on his legs a bit messy. It's kind of hard. The, the camera wants to focus on other stuff. Um, I went into the, the back area and I painted some of that blue for the fusion generator. But the missile pods are done. Uh, so he, he needs highlights. This guy has been only highlighted with uh, the Ushapti bone. I need to give the Screaming Skull highlight. I think, I'm not sure if you can see the difference in the pop. It's kind of hard. The, the light is washing out the highlights, so it's kind of hard to see. Thanks, guys. Uh, it's kind of hard to see the, um, the difference in the pop of the highlights. But uh, when you're looking at them, it does show. And the important thing is they'll look great on a table when uh, they're, they're being played. And that's what matters for me. So, um, yeah, these three are in different shades of finish. But they're, they're such a huge time sink, these three models. Um, you know, even like like the, uh, the little lenses on this model, there's one on his shoulder, there's one on his head, there's one in his face, and there's one on each gun. So there's four lenses I had to paint. Plus just the, the, the insignia there took a long time. I had to paint it a, a couple times to get it to look right without messing it up. So um, uh, the, the one good factor, the, the, the time saver on this is my Micron pen. I can do a little bit of the Micron now on one of my other models because uh, it does save a lot of time. This is a, a Pigma Micron 005. Um, I bought this at Michael's, no, at, at Jerry's Art Orama, and you can find them online too. But uh, I think I've talked about these before. But what makes these things so awesome is like after I've painted him with the base coating, I take this Micron pen and I can come in. I'm trying to figure out how to get this without my hands, my meat hands, blocking everything. You know, you can you can just use the pen to fill in these details. Previously, I would have done this by hand with a with a paintbrush, but you can uh, see the greatness that is these Micron pens because they just do the job. I messed up. I botched that a bit. You know, some you know I'll still, you might have botch it like I just did because I wasn't watching. It's kind of hard to do at this angle, but. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't do it like this when I paint with the Micron. My uh, Jawa back there is messing up the focus. Oh, there, yeah. So you can see that instant line, the instant divider. Part of me while I focus. Uh, getting this guy kind of done. So, um, you know, it's real quickly you can see, uh, haha, 
you can see the, the, the value that this thing, the time saving that this Micron pen brings to modeling. So um, the, the issues with the Micron pen, they don't last very long. They're, well, they only cost like two bucks a piece, which is really reasonable for the time they save. Have I looked at the Gundam markers by Bandai? Uh, no. Uh, elaborate. Link it up, Miss. Link up. Put up a link in there for everybody. Um, as you as you're finding that, I'll continue with this. Uh, and the other issue, which I don't really like, is they don't make a Micron 005 sepia, which is a dark brown. Um, and because sepia would be better for filling in the details on this model to go with the rest of the brown. The Micron was like two dollars um and that's in connecticut you can probably find it cheaper in a uh, probably right on well i don't check jerry's art or rama maybe miss can find that too and link that up or uh anybody can really you have my permission <laughs> uh if you can find a link to this on so check out jerry's art or rama and uh see if you can find the link it's a pigma micron 005 black uh, archival link um, I don't feel bad using it because it's made of archival ink. That means the ink won't fade. It's uh, it's formulated so that it's meant to be archived. Uh, so it's professional quality and it's not going to fade out and uh, go away. Um, so yeah, getting back to they, they don't make they don't make a 005 sepia. The the smallest they get is a double is a 01 or 05 sepia. The higher the number, the the bigger the the tip. And, um, oh, Gundam marker. Oh, I thought you were talking, wait, are you talking Gundam? I don't know. I'm a little confused, Mini Girl. Mini Girl just confused me. I think Mist was talking about Gundam toys by Bandai. And, uh, Mini Girl is talking about marker spitting paint. Ah. Find a link. Put it up there. Um, if you could put up a link to the Pigma Micron, that'd be great, too. Um. You know, like the good thing about the black is that you can keep this in your kit, and uh, little things like um, what do I have on my pile of goodness here? Well, I've got this guy. This is a, a Blood Angels uh, Sanguinary Priest that I'm doing for a, a little charity thing. Um, however, I don't want to touch him with this. Oh, wait, no, there's a couple of spots. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect spot. Oh look! Oh, you see, yeah, I'm glad I did that because, especially like, on the arms of of the Space Marine power armor, those little details are so hard to get. This is perfect. I just filled in that. That's been bugging me. I'm glad I picked him up. That little spot on his arm, uh, below the cuff of his hand, behind the you can't see it, behind the pistol, um, wasn't painted. Or when I painted it, I painted over the the splitting part with the black and uh, this kind of fills that in for me so I'm gonna go over this model with this pen with it when I have a more steady hand and uh, fill it in the, those details yeah I'm, pay I'm giving this away there was a um, I gotta find the, the email address and the name of the guy but he had sent me um, a request to see if I wanted to donate anything for a, a charity giveaway and uh, I'm donating this sanguinary priest to the um, the giveaway this is actually one of the first new blood angels I painted so it kind of means a lot to me um, he's not quite finished yet but I think you know he looks pretty outstanding this was like this was like when I first started to figure out really figure out red uh, that's what this model means to me it was like my my kind of renaissance in painting red um, so that, you know so like when people ask for stuff like that I usually give them something that has a meaning to me um, when I can Let's check out some of the chat here. Ah, so uh, the Gundam markers. Mini Girl is ex explaining that you have to shake them. They're not normal markers. Frankly, anything you have to shake that actually has real paint in it, no good. Um, I've tried stuff like that before, and it's a, it's really difficult controlling the the amount of paint that comes out of that tip, and it's definitely no good for fine detail like on these guys. Uh, it might be good for um, big tanks, you know. Maybe those things might be good at like filling in some of the some of the areas on the large tanks and uh, filling space. But as far as fine control, the ones I've tried were uh, not functional. Um, 
now that I understand what we're talking about. So Miss just put up oh, Miss put in uh, a link for the Pigma Micron pen. Um, afterwards, when I when I get this, hey, how you doing? How you doing, man? When I get this uploaded to YouTube, I'll try and put a link to the Micron pen in the uh, description for for the uh, mini wargaming guys. Uh, I'm supposed to upload the the recordings of these videos to my YouTube channel so that uh, Dave can link them into Mini Wargaming under under my channel so, so people can watch them. So I have three that I owe now after tonight's. Um, so yeah, those uh, I've tried lots of those. Different, I actually have some here. Anything that you got to shake that's got a ball inside, forget it for uh, for anything fine on a model. Um, the only real purpose I could give them is like uh, maybe like as a shading. Um, for example, like there's ribs on this Riptide's shoulder joint here. And maybe like I can use one of those big nozzled uh, marker brushes to fill in some darker shading of the ribbing. But uh, that, you know, I, I'd be struggling to find a purpose to eat for that, that marker. Uh, the good, that was the good Jawa time. I like that. Um, so, uh, what else, what else do I have this to talk about tonight? I don't think I'm going to make Mechanicon. It makes me sad, but uh, things have come up, and I don't think I'm going to make it. I need to talk more about it to the wife. Um, uh, you know, just sometimes uh, you can't go. And it sucks because, um, you know, that's my favorite tournament. Uh, Mechanicon is the, the first GT I won. Uh, Valhalla's in, in Sweden, isn't it? Uh, Miss just asked if I was going to Valhalla. Uh, I don't know where that is. The um, oh no no I'm uh, I, I just don't have it in me to, the, in the funds really to fly anywhere. I always want to. Oh, that's right, the blue table painting one. Um, he's invited me out, and uh, I always want to. That's on my list of, of my bucket list of things to do. When I win the lottery and retire from my job, uh, I will go to every tournament. Um, but that one sounds a lot of fun. Uh, there's a couple. There's one down in South Carolina, I think, run by the 11th Company guys that I would love to get to. There's Feast of Blades in Denver um, that I would love to get to. And uh, there's one out on the West Coast uh, in California, I think, or maybe the Seattle. There's a couple out there that I would love to get to. Um, a lot of things I want to do. I want to get out to the UK to, to gamers uh, war gaming world and just and take on all of UK. Uh, <laughs> take on all comers. Fritz and I have, have been uh, bouncing that one around for years, showing up at uh, Warhammer World in the UK. Um, I always intended to get up to, to Mini War Gaming before he closed the store and take on uh, Mini War Gaming Dave and Matt. Um, that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, the only way I'm going to get those guys on a table now is to get them to come to a U.S. con. Um, and uh, get them to come down and play. Uh, my next con, if I don't make Mechanicon, is going to be Temple Con. And that one I'm certainly making. Um, uh, that's at Rhode Island uh, in February. I'm already uh, booked in to go. And uh, the reason why I'm going to that one is because it's just so awesome. Uh, basically, they take over not just one hotel, but four, at least four, four or five hotels, and they pack them full of people. Uh, the main hotel is where everything happens. It's a big uh, it's a big cosplay and gaming con where there's 40K and fantasy and war machine, you name it. Guys playing Dungeons and Dragons in the corner of a hotel. Um, it's fantastic. And I love that, you know, I just love being surrounded by so many like-minded people that just like to have fun and uh, enjoy themselves. Um... So that's probably going to be my next action, unless I can uh, somehow work out TempleCon with the wife. Well, uh, dude, you know, uh, uh, I'll have to add Sweden to my bucket list. Bucket list too. Welcome back, Dragon Wraith. Um, so we'll see. When I, whenever I win the lottery, I'll make all these trips all over the place. So um, the rest of my Tau, I got these broadsides coming, and I, I switched my list around. I was playing, uh, I was playing a hammerhead with long strike, and he really wasn't doing much for me. He was good as like a deterrent, and he was good for long reach if I had to kill maybe a model or something. 
But it was, it was a lot of points, like 200 points, and uh, about the same cost of three broadsides. And when I really thought about it, three broadsides was just a way better choice. Um, uh, they're just so much more effective, especially at the game I want to play. Uh, you, you know, the only real purpose for the Hammerhead is to kill Land Raiders, and you just don't see them anymore. Uh, maybe one or two, but um, you don't see them. And uh, so I added... I kept my Skyray missile defense gunship, and I added a second Riptide, which is this guy. He's uh, he's still in the process of being painted. You can see, oh, by the way, here, look, you can see the Army Painter Desert Yellow, and the first layering of the uh, Tau Light Ochre. Um, you can see the, the difference between the two. Why do I go Desert Yellow instead of just white instead? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I think it's because I can be a little bit more loose with the uh, the Tau uh, Light Ochre. I don't have to be so worried about covering it because it, it does a good job. But if I leave some of this showing, it's not as obvious as it would be if I went all white as a base color. Uh, Mistress of Minis. Is that another girl? Are there two girls in my show? <laughs> Amazing. Um, Land Raider, she says, Land Raider might start popping up as people adjust to the new Space Marine Codex and try to make Centurions work. Yes, I totally agree with you. And uh, what you just said is exactly how I've always kind of made a career out of playing 40K. Um, uh, I was always, I was always uh, trying to think ahead of, of the curve. And um, Definitely, I think, especially, you know, Tau are going to be forcing Land Raiders onto the table because you're seeing guys go with lists that I'm going with. All broadsides, no tank killing punch. So, um, the only thing is, though, uh, allies are, are still switching it up because you're seeing dudes play the Wraith Knight, which is which is what I had going on with this guy. I have a, a Wraith Knight in progress here. Um, uh, I've just... I wasn't going to get this done in time for Mechanicon, so I just, you know, I started trying it, but it's just, it's such a big model and so much to do that I'm not going to get this guy painted in time, so he got shelved again. But Wraith Knights uh, can just walk up, they can fly, they can like jump pack and charge and just punch Lane Raiders to death. But, uh, but yeah, being ready for tomorrow's meta. So, um, the point is that uh, Land Raiders, you know, like I used to play... Uh, in a couple of tournaments, I played a really nasty uh, Blood Angels Land Raider Crusader list, um, which had a very short heyday. It was killed off by uh, Grey Knight Psy Cannon Spam. They ended that. Um, but uh, for a while, the meta has shifted. Melted Guns had gone away and in favor of Plasma, and um, or just in general. Uh, there wasn't all that many Melted Guns, basically because Land Raiders went away, and because of... Uh, Melt of Vets and, and Vendettas for the Guard. They scared away the Land Raiders. And um, so they were gone. So after they disappeared, I started playing five of them with uh, with my Blood Angels. And uh, they and I wrecked a lot of face. But in the last tournament I played, went up against a, a Grey Knight list. And he just side cannoned me off the table. Cracked all the Raiders, like on the first turn. And... Um, just blasted me, you know, because when you got that many raiders on the table, you don't have much else. So uh, I didn't have much to take care of anything of the Grey Knights. Ah, oh, memories. Yeah, that was that was a fun list. You know, my favorite meta list, uh, the, the meta beater, was with the the Blood Angels still had their PDF, and I played my my Death from Above Stomp Stomp list where I had three Death Company Dreadnoughts in um, drop pods. This was before the, the, the Talons even, before the, the Blood Talons uh, uh, in the PDF. And uh, for a short window, that list won me a, a lot of tournaments because um, people didn't have the power to deal with it. They were so nasty. Those Death Company Dreads at the time were just just nasty. And uh, I would drop the three of them back there, and they would just run wild in people's back ranks. And um, then I would just hang out with, with Razorback Glass Cannons uh, and, uh, and but also I had uh, auto Laz predator tanks, so um, that was a lot of fun, and uh, it was a it was a weird list. You didn't see you didn't never saw it very often. Ball predators I had, um, you didn't see it anywhere, and uh, it won me a lot of games because guys couldn't deal with it.
I'm still learning to play and also how to play competitive, but still a bit clueless trying to figure out a great Chaos Space Marine list for tournaments. Have any suggestions, Jawa? Uh, the only thing I know about uh, Chaos Space Marines competitively is those flying dragons. Um, uh, th those dragon things. I'm not sure what they're called, but they're they're super effective. And uh, I know a lot of guys are playing uh, Papa Nurgle. What's his name? Uh, the guy with the big... He's in Terminator armor and he carries the Psy around. Uh, and, and using Nurgle zombies. Um, guys are having some success with that. So I guess the thing with the Chaos book is it's up to you. Do you want to play a bunch of Nurgle zombies or... Yeah, Helldrakes. Take three Helldrakes. And uh, they're nasty. Yeah, well... You, well you can't you can't really blame the list on losing games. Sadly, I don't, I don't mean to make that sound funny, but um, uh, that sounds right. Three squads of twenty Chaos Space Marines, uh, three flyers, and Huron Blackheart. Who cares? What? Well, you're talking you're talking competitive. Most won't allow more than two. Huh? It's a tournament. It's competitive play. They can't they can't make that distinction. They can't say you can only play two. You can play three if you want to. Like, to me, when you're list building for a tournament, game open. You know, game on. Let's play. Uh, I liken it to the Dream Team, the U.S. Dream Team from 1992 when uh, we finally decided. We, we were playing a bunch of fluffy lists in the Olympics before that and taking, like, bronze if we were lucky. So then in 1992, we decided to send the best 12 basketball players in the world to the U.S. to the Olympics all on the same team. And uh, they ended up winning by an average margin of victory of like 65 points. We're talking like Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, and all those old guys. Um, no, no team in the history of sports was would ever be like it again. And uh, anyway, the point is that we were getting our butts kicked until we decided to bring out our three Heldrakes and send them. And they went and torched everybody. Um, so... I, I believe in when you're playing in tournaments, send your A-list, send your dream team. So uh, don't be bashful and don't worry about the other guy. Um, some guys show up at tournaments just so they can play three games. And uh, you feel kind of bad, stomp, or bad stomping on them in a tournament. But frankly, uh, tournaments aren't about pickup games. They're about crushing face. Now, the key factor here with tournaments as we're talking competitive though, that you have to keep in mind. While, yeah, they're meant to be a uh, stomping face, um, and this is something that a lot of new tournament goers don't understand, is that winning the game is not the end-all in a tournament. You still have to be a good sport when you're playing in a, in a tournament. Um, you got to be a good guy. And uh, I can't stress that enough because um, even if the other guy's being a douchebag, you've got to be above the shenanigans. And, uh, you know respectfully call him out and stuff but don't but if he wants to be a jerk let him be the jerk that's the bottom line if he wants to be a jerk and win a tournament in my opinion let him go there's other guys that don't agree with that and they'll fight tooth and nail and, and make a big stink and uh they win more games than me but um to me it's not it's not worth the heartache of of dealing with stuff so uh in my old 40k age i think that com you know competitive is still big to me but Enjoying the game and being a smart, fair player is more important. Don't be a dick. Even if you have an army list, a dick would use. You can have the nasty list and not be a dick. That's uh, part. You know, let's not use that word, I guess. That's probably not PG-13. Uh, let's keep it PG-13. Don't be a dork. <laughs> sorry for that. Sorry, sorry, dads and moms if uh, we were saying... Uh, see, yeah. Sorry if we were saying um, naughty words. Uh dork so uh don't be that don't be that guy it's the girls man they come in here and they start they start saying naughty words yeah well uh, you know you, you you can't feel bad in the tournament um yeah yeah it's it's different tournaments are different you can't feel bad uh be cool but don't be a dork. I think I'll have to write a blog post on that. Um, it's a good sound of advice. 
and uh, and too many guys. Yeah, let's let's. I, I've seen the word on TV as well, but let's not let's not go there. Um, we we do have little kids and parents watching. Um, so my apologies for saying uh, a questionable word. It's funny, like when I'm at school, I say words like crap, and uh, and frankly, I got no problem with saying that word. Bye, mini girl. Yeah, thank you. Um, but it's funny when I say it because the kids eyes, especially the younger kids, the sixth graders, their eyes go whoa. <laughs> Chaos Space Marine. Um, so I don't know much about the infantry, but definitely if you want to win games, play the three the three dragons. They're nasty. Um, the thing that I don't like about tournaments nowadays, and I hate myself for giving into it, is the fact that. It's the big, the big, the bigger of the three templates for orbital bombardment. Um, you know, it's it's when I was at the Nova Open, and I was playing my bloody my uh, Tau in uh, the the trios games. I, I was just kind of mad at myself because there were so many Tau players using Eldar, and um, you know, I just felt I felt dirty. <laughs> I felt I felt like I had sold out my Blood Angels. I have. But they're terrible. I can't win any games with them. Um, uh, they um, they just can't they they can't win games for me. Uh, you, you can win some games, and I'm sure on, on some of uh, you know, like in some of your basements, they're more powerful. But um, you know, I I don't I don't I don't I I like Six Edition. Frankly, I think it's a fun game. It's uh, I like I like the game a lot. Um, you know, like it moves smoothly. There's no real arguments going on, not really, and uh, it's fair. Um, you know, it's fun to play, but it just it crushed my blood angels, and that that um, you know, th there's nobody to be mad at. It's just my army is no good. Fearless is not fearless is not that big a deal. It's not it's not the la the loss of it's not the fearless. It's the um, oh you're talking the chaos guys. Chaos space we have a decent infantry that are underrated for their points cost. They just don't have uh, yeah so yeah if you don't have shall, they shall know no fear you must have uh, fearless because that that sucks when you when you uh, have a squad of space marines and you get cut down because they don't have no no fear. Um, which is also one of the most broken rules in the game, by the way, because I can take my sanguinary priest and attach him to a, a squad of uh, a blob of sixty imperial guard uh, uh, prisoners, and they get and they shall know no fear because <laughs> my priest is attached to them. That is cheese ball. I knew this was gonna try two Drake, two units of plague marines, Nurgle bikes. That that list sounds a lot of fun, frankly. Uh, you know, bikes, plague marines, I like them. Uh, Defiler, Defiler, they're cool. That I think, dude. Frankly, if you're asking for advice, go with that. That list sounds like a lot of fun, and I think that um, you'll still win some games and tournaments with that too. What would make Blood Angels competitive again? I love the question. Uh, I've done a lot of thought about this. And um, the reason why, the biggest punch they took was Furious Charge. Uh, they changed Furious Charge to, they lost the plus to the initiative. It used to be when they assaulted anybody that wasn't like super fast Eldar, uh, Harlequins, uh, they won because they went at initiative 5. And most models go initiative 4 or worse. So, uh... That was the Blood Angels. Get them up there into assault. Even if just a couple make it into assault, they win because they're going to go first. Um, the, the extra strength was nice too. But they lost that initiative bonus, which has killed them uh, on top of all the extra firepower. And, and they also took a little nerf to their uh, feel no pain. So, um... Uh... 
uh, getting caught up here as I, I kind of start get lost on a tangent. Uh, what will make them competitive again? So, um, they need they need a way to deny Overwatch. Uh, maybe it's because they're so furious in their charge and they're so frightening that, uh, that whatever they're charging just can't Overwatch. That would help them a lot. And um, especially with the Tau, because you just, you know, if you try and assault a, a squad of fire warriors and you got 80 guns hitting your squad. Um, so I think that, that plus they need some more, some more Daka Daka, they need more shots. Um, they need, they need more. That They can't compete with Tau. Tau just has so many more strong shots, they can't. So like, uh. Like, they need a, a tank variant that has, like, assault cannons on the side and a turret. Just a lot more shots to, to balance out the game. Uh, going down a list of, uh... <coughs> guard with no, no fear hurts my brain. <laughs> yeah, it's cheesy. You get you get 60 of those, um... They're like the penal squad. They're like four points apiece. And you just attach a, a Blood Angels, um... Sanguinary Priest to them. Or any independent character... That, that's a space marine, and again, they shall know no fear. Uh, it's crazy. So then they're, they have no, no fear. They, they can lose combat, not get cut down, run away, turn around, shoot, they regroup it automatically next turn and can function. So uh, they don't get cut down, and they regroup automatically, and doesn't matter, and shoot and assault. They're awesome. No, no fear is a broken rule. Um... Uh... So what does unyielding specters do? I can't. I don't know what that does. Sorry. Had limits. Oh, so you went to a tournament that had limits. Uh, yeah. So there's there's limits. Um, you know, if you're gonna, if, if frankly, I don't play at tournaments that have silly that have silly limitations like that. Um, it, you know, if, if they want to limit the game, change the game, fine. That's up to them. I just don't go. I find other there's so well, maybe in the U.S. there's so many tournaments that I have to pick and choose what I go to anyway. So um, uh, you can pick them. Uh, uh, yep, the loss of plus one initiative on Furious Charge really hurt the Blood Angels, um, and any other unit that got it. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of other Furious Charging that in the game. Uh, I think I think Harlequins had it maybe. I don't know. Um, Yes, Jack. Here he comes. <laughs> I don't have much more time, um, but it really hurt them. The furious charge. So uh, the, the the armies that could lay down lots and lots and lots of nasty shots, like the Necrons and the Tau, really came out good in sixth. What do you have? You have lights for pumpkins. Whoa! Oh. You want to come up here on my lap while I talk to my show? Oh, they don't flash. Yeah, look at them flash. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. Hi, you do, 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 do. So Necrons came out all right. Uh, I can fit 20 Marines and two kill them. That takes time. Uh, uh, frankly, killing 20 Space Marines takes nowhere near the time that it used to take. Um, with, with, like, the Tau with so many shots that they can put down. Oh, no, 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 mister. No, 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 mister. <laughs> I won't be a punk. I uh, don't want to be a punk. You're a punk. I'm not a punk. You're a punk. I'm um, Getting caught up here on the chat. Obliterators, uh, I, I, I don't, I've never played, I, I've never even played Chaos, honestly. i played against plenty of them. Um, Obliterators are annoying. Oh, my goodness, don't touch the models. Let it go. Let it go. I you're being a monster. I uh, guys, hate to do it, but uh, it's oh. you know I try to go 45 minutes, and, and that is my time. And uh, my time, as you can see, is expired. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm gonna sign off. I love I love this has been a fun show because I love getting a chance just to share knowledge and talk 40k. Um, something I don't do very often anymore. So um, thanks for for watching my show. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming in every week. Please have Oh, oh, the invulnerable save for Legion of the Damned. Uh, they, they, by the way, Legion of the Damned are awesome nowadays. They, the points went down like 12 points a model, something, something crazy like that. And uh, I think they can even take some grav weapons. So, um, Legion of the Damned are uh, are pretty good nowadays. All right, say bye, Jack.
Bye, Jack. No, no, don't say bye, Jack. Say bye. Bye, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thanks for thanks for coming in i'll see you all next week i'm going to try and get matt to come back next week and get the good camera set up and we're going to try and play some x-wing for you um so that that's uh my treat will you stop touching the models hands off the towel that's the plan for next week so hopefully i'll see you next week all right bye